everyone. Today we're going to be talking about image classification, whether you should be using convolution or attention models. So image classification is one of the most uh, popular sort of either first models to learn or it's in pretty much every uh, you know higher level deep learning class where you're actually performing your network. It's kind of a lot of people's sort of first network and um, for good reason, right? It's really practical. It's really kind of easy to understand. Basically, you just have you know some image you want to classify this image as either being you know a dog or cat or some number of classes, um, but you know when you first think about it, it seems very elementary problem. But then you start thinking of you know other sort of very different things that could happen. Like for instance, if if we just had the same picture but we took out you know that that picture of the actual cat, and we just focus on these buildings here, um, you know classifying the same thing as either a cat or dog uh, doesn't make as much sense. Um, and so, you know, how, how do we actually create models to actually, you know, sort of think about these uh, image classification problems? And there's been some work that's been done um, on convolutional models. So we're going to go ahead and check out these uh, illustrations, uh, which I think will help explain them pretty well. So this illustration is a pretty nice uh, depiction of uh, just a single layer of a convolutional neural network. If you're not as familiar, so this active convolution, what that really means is, you know, starting from this initial image that we see on the right, um, you can think about an image as just being like a matrix of, you know, values really for RGB. So there would be, you know, a tensor, a stack of three of these. Um, but you can also think about this as just a single kind of uh, image. And we're going to rotate this filter. And this filter has values like 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Um, and basically we're going to slide that over and we're going to add up all the, the values that are pretty much multiply those and add those up. So this is this convolved feature map. And then now um, this represents sort of the summation of that entire filter map. And so that kind of gets at that question. We saw, remember that the cat was in the middle of the image and we say, okay, we're basically able to sort of scan this along the entire image to actually find out where it's, you know, see if we saw a cat anywhere. And so this, this is that act of convolution. Um, and so this has been actually one of the most popular ways uh, to actually look at images um, and, and, like how, there's been a lot of work that's been done, you know, convolutional neural networks, uh, starting from Alex in 2012, uh, where it had, you know, state of the art class, classification, even right now, which we're writing this, which is now uh, 2021, um, still efficient net is, is one of the most uh, popular and sort of best convolutional networks. Um, but, you know, these attention models have also been getting a lot of, uh, you know, sort of attention. And, um, doing their success in other four sort of fields and natural language processing and all also image classification or other sort of computer vision techniques, not just image classification, but also things like semantic segmentation and other tasks. Uh, but that hasn't as been um, explored in why haven't these uh, attention models been as successful on image classification. And so we'll talk about more about that in a little bit in a second. So obviously when we're talking about these convolutional networks, we're not just talking about a single, um, you know, layer of these, like this is a depiction, we, we saw just now what would be a single layer, but we do this multiple times. And this idea of convolution, it's, it's really kind of important is that as we scale outward, our, sep our respective receptive field gets bigger. In other words, you know, starting from our initial image, right, we'll take this, what says a nine by nine square, and we'll, we'll share that around the entire image. And that'll be our way of actually um, accomplishing that vision on that, you know, whatever object we're using. And then as we go out more, more and more, uh, and we can do that convolution, repeated convolutions again. Um, we can actually, you know, scale this to identify this and go keep on doing this until we can get larger and larger. You know, essentially, we can look at larger images on the larger regions on the original images based on the convolved filters. And doing this, you know, successfully has been sort of the way that we that we've uh, always thought about or kind of conventionally thought about uh, how to best do these image classification problems. Um, and so next, we'll talk about just. One more uh, example that to show you uh, how these convolutional networks work, and then also talk a little bit more about you know why those are not effective. And uh, basically, um, the the idea is um, when you're kind of limited still by the uh, essential field, and you have to calculate these. But basically, what I'm saying is um, you still are only going you're not going to be able to truly get global um, recognition of this image, especially if you have a very very large image. Um, it's going to be hard to actually, you know, get without, you know, significant downscaling uh, to actually be able to look at the entire uh, map at once. Um, and the other thing is, is that it kind of forces the network to only look at local sort of uh, features closer to the original image. Um, and as, as you get 
further and further away, you're able to actually look at the global features kind of independently of where the local feature is close, closest to the image because you're kind of getting away from the true image. Uh, but we'll see like attention models will actually have this way that they'll be able to actually um, examine it, the whole network and the local features at the same time. And by modeling, especially modeling that, we can get a past a lot of features. Um, and so, you know, they, and there's been showing it why the, these attention models are a lot more efficient. Uh, so let's talk about you know why they actually haven't done as well on these uh, on this image classification test. So this is what they call the this paper uses this term inductive biases of convolutional neural network, um, and this is just a depiction of from AlexNet um, to modern day, which is now 2021. Uh, how how have the best models? What are the best models that have been used to benchmark this ImageNet data set, which is this data set of images? Um, that have been a lot of models are used to benchmark the results on. And basically, all of these are convolutional in neural, neural network, or at least have one um, convolutional block. And even this paper is, is considered sort of state of the art, or at least very close to that state of the art attention model on ImageNet data is still just below uh, the convolutional model. And they say that this is sort of in the inductive bias. And what, what that term means um, is basically they're saying that there's been a lot of research that's been done on convolutional neural networks, and they're really easy. Yeah, these inductive biases are sort of things that you do to models that will allow them to learn easier. So basically, if you have uh, things like, they, they come out with things like squeeze and excitation networks, modifications of convolutional neural networks, and those effectively have the, they have the effect of making it easier to train better and better models. Basically, that these models have been optimized. Um, but these, this attention network that, they, that they're presenting here has uh, been able to have pretty state-of-the-art, uh, close to their uh, performance. And what they're what they might be hinting at, they don't really say this, but uh, what could be foreseeable is basically the fact that um, as they get closer to as these as more and more attention research gets on these attention models, uh, they'll be able to uh, get more and more efficient. So in the future, they might become more important in really what you would use for image classification over these convolutional networks. So let's talk a little bit more exactly how they did this for this paper. Um, and so this is. Starting from where this is just the equation for the attention network that you'll see in pretty much every single paper that uses this attention models. And I think the, the really important thing here is very simple, right? It's a very simple model. And I think the important thing to recognize here is that um, they're all, these are, these are essentially just matrix multiplication. Um, and they're basically set up in a way to be manageable. So one of the big problems with that um, a, a lot of traditional you know, networks, like a feed forward network isn't really efficient uh, for just going, you know, to looking at a whole image because you get these uh, really, really large matrices calculations, but this attention model is able to actually separate these ar into arbitrary dimensions. So we'll see exactly how to do that by looking at the uh, previous uh, visual transform model, the VI. Yeah, so this is one of, this is the, um, from the pa one of the papers that they cited extensively in the paper, the visual transform paper, um, and they actually say, very sim that their model is, is essentially identical to this model, except for a minor uh, change in the distillation token, which we'll also talk about in a second. But basically, it's, they'll take this image, and, and in contrast of sharing the same filter as you go across like a convolutional network, uh, basically at the same time, you sort of segment this into individual patches. They do 16 by 16 uh, patches for, for these. And they essentially put all of those into a given encoder at once. And this encoder once is actually has the, the property of being invariant to which order that you feed the patches in. So basically saying, okay, well, this is a group of patches. And then it doesn't really matter what order. So you, you take local segments, but then you also kind of mix them up and, and understand one representation from there. And this head is able to actually identify these. And the really, again, again the key part is uh, we saw how simple that the equation was. Essentially, it's just uh, manageable 16 by 16 uh, matrix multiplications. Um, actually, I think they're a little bit times three because you do um, each of the RGB layers. But basically, they're very simple matrix multiplications and that you can you, you know, do this very efficiently. And so that's why this, uh, this paper doesn't actually use um, number of features like a lot of models do to compare because really, I think the attention models do have a higher number of features, but they use the amount, how many images they can process per second. As a, as a measure of how efficient uh, they, they are. And basically show that these attention models are able to be trained uh, pretty accurately on a uh, pretty reasonable basis. Like pretty much if you just have a single GPU or a couple GPUs, you can train po pretty powerful image classification models using these attention networks.
so this is their so this is their attention model. Um, basically, they have it's it, they have very similar. They pretty much say it's identical to one we just looked at the VIT uh, model that I showed earlier. Um, but basically, they have this a single class token, which is this trainable vector, and they have the the patch tokens, which are from the image. And what happens is, is they essentially only try to learn this. The, the objective is to essentially learn this class token uh, based on these patch tokens. And the, what happened, and what they do, the, the big kind of thing that this paper talks about, which is this distillation uh, paper, um, which is gonna be linked in the, in the description below. Um, basically what they do is they add this, this distillation token, which is very similar to this class token, which represents sort of the class, it, it, it evolves with, it goes through the network. It, it's given into the network as an input and also taken as, as an output of this network. Um, and it's trained, this is what's actually being trained. It forces this network to actually learn and modify this class token based on the information from these patch tokens in order to, to I, and that's where it learns what the cost is. But additionally to that, this paper also adds this distillation token, which is they say is really key. Um, and so, and, and the, I think there, this is the really sort of big benefit of this paper is this distillation token, the way that they treat this very similarly to the class token is sort of the key innovation of this paper uh, because it's this sort of attention specific mechanism that you wouldn't be able to do with the, with the convolutional neural network. And basically you're just taking, um, so they're, they're assuming that you have some other really strong image classifier. And basically you can take like a convolutional network and basically, you can take um, information from that network's ability to classify uh, that image and add that to your attention model to actually adjust. And you can change and adjust these distillation tokens to actually identify um, how a network, you're both identifying basically how, how your network is able to learn with respect to the output, which is kind of the traditional class, what you think of the cross entropy loss between the, um, the, uh, their output and your class token vector that you're learning, uh, but it's also doing the same with another distillation vector that it's learning from this teacher network um, that is essentially uh, modifying. They, they are able to say, they say things like, you're able to get the sort of good inductive biases of things that have optimized uh, for, for convolutional networks. And you can take really any classifier is what they, is, is the point. You can take any classifier to identify this distillation token. And because it's, they similarly learn to the class token uh, in this attention map model, it's able to, to learn this distillation uh, mechanism from these patch tokens. And that's actually really interesting. So this is sort of the different losses. So this is uh, the first part is uh, essentially, well, they, they, they make the decision. So this is the total loss from the distillation through attention mechanisms. Um, they first have this soft loss and this is essentially, so this was actually a really interesting part of the paper too. Uh, but basically, the, this first term is representing, um, you know, I, we're just the, the pretty basic, I'm learning this, I'm trying, I'm making this model with the attempt to learn from this image what the target output. So the Y is the target output, uh, what this what this model is predicting is this other term here. And, and what I'm also doing is weighing it, one minus uh, uh, lambda and then times lambda over here, uh, pretty much the KL divergence or the distance from the teacher network to this current network. And this is basically from the, the soft um, sort of approach. Basically, this is from the difference between the soft distillation and the hard distillation is that the soft distillation approach isn't actually using the, um, the network output. It's using um, still the, the ground truth from the label. But what we mean by hard is we're actually taking from the actual model prediction. So from the actual, we're using this YT, which is not, so it's different than Y, it's, it's the label from the network. So basically instead of using the output of the network, we're using the actual label of the network. And it's a little counterintuitive um, because basically they're saying, you, we're not learning from the ground truth using this network, this teacher network. We're learning from only the teacher network itself, essentially. And they're saying that that's a way to actually get the good kind of, because the attention will still be split between the distillation and the class token is you're sort of independently learning, okay, what is this other really strong network doing? But also, and that is different, distinctly different from the, what my network is learning based on these images. And in that way, we're able to actually use this teacher network 
to actually reinforce uh, this other network. And, and they're able to use that you can use, they said they actually get more success using the convolutional network as a teacher network uh, rather than attention network that helps you get the sort of, you know, the, very, the, the research that's been done on these other networks while also using this attention mechanism. And that's sort of, the, again, the key sort of uh, approach to this paper. Um, and so next they're gonna go a little bit more into just the results. I'm not gonna go too much into this, but just highlighting here, um, the, the state of the art networks down here um, tend to be pretty slow, 83, 27 images per second. Uh, but these transformer networks um, tend to be a good bit faster, 182. This one's 53.8 uh, uh, images per second, but these even these smaller ones are still have pretty fairly good accuracy, um, end up being up to four to five times as fast. Um, and some of these, you know, are extremely, extremely fast and still do really well. Um, and so basically as these, the, the reason why, if you look at the title, the convolution versus attention, um, and why it hasn't been as successful is there's been a lot of research that's been done on, on convolutional models. Um, but now as attention models are becoming more and more research, we're able to actually use things like this paper is distilling information explicitly from convolutional models to learn attention models. Um, we can actually start using that. And I think that these attention models going 20 and 21 and beyond are going to be uh, pretty important for and, and might start overtaking this convolutional model. I think it's a matter of time. So finally, we'll just briefly talk about um, extensive, basically some notes that they had from the paper of, of running this, these attention models for image classification. They talk about the need for this extensive data augmentation. And basically that just means that, so data augmentation is just, you have to make you're pretty much making more and more data from your existing data. So for example, if you have a big image, you could split that up into different crops and call each of those crops of that same image, uh, that same label and fix, actually feed your, your model more data, or you could flip um, data, have it you know vertically or horizontally flipped. Um, and that will be a way of getting more data. They say that in these sort of packages, auto augment and rand, rand augment tend to be pretty helpful and that these, these tension models do require extensive data augmentation, something to keep in mind. Uh, they also say that these models are um, sensitive to initialization. They use a truncated normal distribution uh, to actually, um, you know, pre-do these weights. And they also have, they, they identify, um, you know, these sort of uh, baseline hyperparameters that, that they kind of recommend using. Um, and so these are just pretty, these are, they say that these are very similar to the VIT models. Uh, so basically, you know, it might be helpful when you're, when you're running models to look at those. Um, and then I think finally, they, they kind of mentioned this in the paper. Uh, they sort of had this two-step two po sort of approach to training. So they first train on the entire data set using uh, training, which is down sample data or smaller. So they use 224 by 224. Uh, but then after that, they actually fine-tune for their class um, at a different resolution at this. They use 384 and at the upscale resolution, they find that this sort of uh, different procedure actually helps um, learn a little bit better. And that's sort of the difference between the pre-train and the fine-tuning. Um, and they see that the, the actually fine-tuning um, ends up doing a little bit better. But overall, these are these these results are very similar to, you know, sort of the state-of-the-art uh, CNN classification. I think it's a matter of time uh, before these attention models really start, start to take hold and uh, become state-of-the-art.